let me turn off my roof so I can see into my building there. And I'm also going to turn on my A plan and also my A walls. And I don't expect you to draw any of this. I expect you to find this information in the SketchUp warehouse. You probably could find doors there also, but I want you to practice constructing your own doors. I'm going to open up my 3D warehouse and I will go over to window and then go to 3D warehouse. I am already signed in. If you're not signed in, it may ask you to do so. From this 3D warehouse, these are components that other people have made and they are willing to share them. They upload and they're free to use. This is how the community helps each other out. What I'd like to do is I'd like to search for some kitchen components. Specifically, let me start with a refrigerator. So I type in refrigerator in the search and it's going to show me products then it can show me models if I click on that. And then there are collections. And then there's something over here in the catalog. I would stick with models for now. Look at them. And some of these are in really good shape. Others sometimes lack on the quality side. But check the models. Under products, sometimes, and it looks like in this case, there are manufacturers that have provided models to be used. So this is a well-known brand, Bosch. So you can use that. You can look through here. There's KitchenAid brand. These could be a little sophisticated. They can contain a lot of information. So just be mindful. What I like to do in order to keep my file size down, I'll look through the models. And then for the file size, I don't want anything big. So I filter that down and I bring it down to anywhere within, let's say 10 megs because anything bigger than 10 megs is just too much information for me. This could work out and I'm looking at the refrigerator and I'm thinking about the refrigerator that I had you draw and it was a typical one for home. It wasn't the bigger size refrigerator. So I think what I'd like to do is pick one that is average size. And this one here seems to be okay to use. Let's see which other one looks to be okay. Maybe that one, you'll test these out. And for some reason, I'm gravitating to this one right now. I'm going to give it one click. It tells me that there are 25 materials applied here. That might be a little too much. There are 222 polygons, and that just is all the information it's made up of. And then the file size is a relatively decent file size. I may choose to download this one. If I do that, I would click on download. And I'm prompted. Would I like to load this directly into my model? And the answer right now would be yes. So when it brings the model in, you'll notice there's the refrigerator, but whoever put this together, they never deleted that SketchUp model. I'll bring it in. I'll give it one click. And now what I need to do is edit my model. So I'm going to tap my space bar. That gives me my selection tool. Double click inside of this component. And then I'll take this figure here and delete. Is there any more information in here? Because I'm looking at that bounding box and it seems to be a little too big still. I'm going to window all of this and see if there's anything that was not erased, but it looks like it's okay. So there's the refrigerator. I'll click off of it. So I can now take it. And by the way, I'm looking at it and I always double check my entity info and it tells me it's a component current tag 3D window, and that's not right. So maybe what I do is I create a new tag here and I'll just refer to this one as warehouse. And maybe these are the items that I bring in from the warehouse and I tag them this way. Once I do that, I'll come back over here and I'll tag it warehouse. And now I will move it into place. The first thing I want to do is just make sure I bring it in and it's located near the area that I want it. So I type M and I pick it and I have to be careful because, you know, if I pick it from this corner, that's not necessarily the ground. And by the way, you see how it's actually coming in at ground level. It's at zero and I raised my building. 
So step one for me right now is to actually take it from the very, very bottom here and actually bring it up and place it on that floor. So let's see, will it go onto the floor? It looks like it is going onto the floor on the face. Great, which means that I can extend it and make sure that it goes on this face, which it is doing. So that's good. Now I need to rotate it. So I use my rotate tool and I'm going to rotate it from the bottom here. And I'm going to make sure I use my up arrow to constrain to blue axis. And I click on that endpoint. I click out here to start and I rotate in this direction, 90 degrees, and it looks like it's already snapping to it. It's constrained, so I'm going to click. And then the last thing I'll do is move it into place. Because this is a warehouse item, it may not match my dimensions. That's all right. I'll figure things out here. If I need to make my cabinet and counter a little bit shorter to make it work out, then that's what I'll do. And to make it easier for me to see this, I'm going to turn off my walls. And now I can go ahead and move it. So I'll type M and I'll move it from the very bottom right here. And I'll bring it over and try to get it to align somewhere here. And it looks like it's actually smaller and that's all right. And I'll just place it right here. Just a little smaller, maybe that's better. Don't spend too much time worrying about the details here. It's just a warehouse component that represents a refrigerator and we're all set. So I'll do that with the refrigerator. I'll do it with my stove, with my sink. I can get some counters here. Let me show you. I'll go back to window 3D warehouse. And instead of searching for refrigerator, I will search for kitchen cabinet. And look at this, I could have downloaded this entire model and it has that information. I could download this and it's all there. I can go so far as to download all of that. So a lot of choices to pick from and notice my properties, I still kept it to under 10 meg because I don't want something overwhelming. Let me close this out. Lots to pick from here, but be very careful because some of these you'll still have to go in and edit. For example, let's take this kitchen cabinet. I'll pick that. And I just look at the number of materials, the polygons and file size. Everything seems to be okay. So I'll go ahead and click download. Yes, load directly into my model. And I'd like to place it. Notice for some reason, it's just, it's snapping. It has a different point, different insertion point. It's not near the component and that's okay. So I'll just click right here for now. And that's the component, it's highlighted. I look at the tag, I'd like to move it and put it on warehouse. And now I can go ahead and use it or edit as needed. So I simply, let's see, tap my space bar, double click. And is it possible to move the sink over? If I click on the sink, it's actually one single component there, which is great. If I wanted to, I can type M and I'll move it along that surface, but it looks like the opening was already created. So no, I can't move it. So I won't be able to edit that the way I wanted to. Maybe for this example, for our project, it might be okay to leave it there. Or I'll tell you what I might do is I might select that component and I might scale it. And when I scale it, I would pick this point and I would go in the other direction and I would type minus one and enter. That gives me a mirror image. And when I do that, maybe now move it into location somewhere over here like that. But I want to make sure I place it just right on this side. And by the way, that's the toe kick down here. And I know that that distance can be anywhere from three to four inches. And those are the doors. Now I'll more or less ignore the door locations. Let me just do a quick check here. I will select my measuring tape and I'll measure from this point over three and an eighth. So here's what I would do. I'm going to type M 
and move it from here, right there. And now I'm going to move it again, only this time I'll bring it back a distance of three inches and enter. And that's close enough for what I'd like to do. This counter actually extends out further. So let's see if I can edit the countertop. So I'll go ahead and use my space bar to get my select tool, double click. And let's see how they made this model. If I click on this component here, it looks like it's, I'm sorry, if I click on that group, looks like I have to give it a double click to change that backsplash. Once I do that, if I come in over here, okay, I'll be able to erase it. So what I'll do now is use my erase tool and erase all of this right here like that. Erase that line and then come over to the other side and erase all of this. Great. Click on my select tool. That looks good. And then I believe I brought it out a foot. So I'm going to type P for push pull. Click on this, bring it out one foot enter tap the escape key and then spacebar gives me my select tool click off of my group and then zoom out click off of my component and that's what i would like to have and then of course i could take this cabinet or this face and bring it all the way to the wall. So let me do that right now. I'll give it a double click and then click on that face. But it looks like it is a group. So let me double click. I can edit the group. And now what I'd like to do is come over here to view, component edit, do not hide the rest of the model. And now P for push pull, I take this surface bring it out and let it lock into this edge. And then space bar to bring my select tool back, click off of that group, but I still would like to continue editing. So now I'd like to edit that countertop. I'll give it a double click, type P, take that face, bring it out, align it with that endpoint. And then spacebar gives me my select tool. And then I'm simply going to click out here one time and then click a second time. And then takes me out of the component. And that's really what I wanted to do. And then of course I can add materials as needed. It doesn't have to match exactly what you have drawn. If you find a warehouse item component that suits your needs, go with it. I just want you to be able to use the warehouse to populate your space. And now that I have that in, I'll go ahead and turn on some of the other information. Actually, I'll keep the roof off for one second so I can see inside. And I'm starting to make progress. Now, look at this. I actually brought that out a little too far. It needs to go in eight inches. So let me fix that right now before I forget. Let me give this a double click, double click, and then P for push pull in eight inches, enter, tap the escape key, escape again, space bar, uh, click off of it, and now double click the counter, P for push pull, take this surface in eight inches, enter, escape, doesn't do it, so I use my space bar. Now I'll try escape and then escape again. There we go. And then turn on my walls. And that's better. That's how you can start modeling your doors, your windows, and using warehouse components.